I was a horrible teenager. I was defiant to my parents. I just knew that I was wrong, right. everyone else was wrong. When I first got kicked out, I had no socks or shoes on. And I was just roaming the streets and it started to rain. I went to the park, because I had a big slide. And I stayed there the night. I thought they'd let me in the next day, but they locked the doors. So that's when I knew it was actually serious and they actually had kicked me out. Piss off. You're not allowed back in what you hear. I went over the road and I stayed at my friend's after my parents said that, because I just needed a friend. I was sofa surfing till October when I actually managed to get put into care. It was a woman, she foster care for people, so she lets them stay with her for as long time they need. This is your room. At 18, they decided to kick me out because I overdosed. I was going through court. Um, I lost all my friends. I was in a new environment. I didn't know where I was. I just thought if I overdose, that I don't have to deal with it. The first time I even heard about night stuff was the day after my birthday because I went to the council with my PA and they're, they're the ones who told me to go to Nike staff and that's when I met Julia and Judith. Judith and Julia managed to get me support and accommodation within a month of knowing them and I was in that support and accommodation for just under two years. I've done a peer mentoring and a cooking course with Night Stuff as well. Night Stuff is really important because if you're homeless or you just need help or someone to chat, they're always there, the, the door's always open. My future's looking pretty good. I'm feeling proper optimistic. I'm doing a course with the NHS. I've got my own place. I'm just pretty happy. I never really had a settled home because of the way I dealt with things. Me and my mum started to clash. She didn't know how to deal with me. I think it was because we were too alike. When I was 14, I just decided that I was going to leave. When I moved in with my auntie, everything was brilliant. I went to a small school. We'd go riding and we'd take the dog for a walk around the country lanes. I loved it. I applied for the public services course. I received a letter to say that I could go on the course. It did make me feel really, really good about myself, like I was actually going to get somewhere in life. Me and my auntie sat down and, and talked about the costs of actually doing the course and it just, it, it, it wasn't able to happen because we just didn't have the money. It was, it was really depressing not to be able to go. I decided I wanted to go home on Christmas Day. I think I was, I was just too immature to make big decisions. When I went to college, I met people there who were doing drugs and things like that and that's when 
I joined in and started taking a, a lot of different things and it got out of hand. I was on a really bad come down and my mum and dad turned up at the flat where I was and I went to answer the door and I told them I was fine and uh, I'd obviously collapsed because I opened my eyes and I was on the floor and all I could hear was my mum saying, what are you doing on the floor? I was really scared and I, I didn't want them to see me die. I was 18 when I first got in touch with Nightstop. I'd got stuck in Kidderminster because I hadn't been paid. I had nowhere to go. Even though me and my parents were speaking, we knew that we couldn't live together. So I went to Connections to see if there was any help there and that's when I met Judith. She told me about what Nightstop do. She gave me food and clothes and started doing referrals for me to see if I could get into supported housing for young people. It was a big relief that there was something there to help me. It just made me feel safer to just have them to talk to as well. I wasn't just another statistic that gets fobbed off. Nightstop have helped me by putting me through a peer mentoring course which I've now got the qualification for. I can help with any new young people that come in if they need someone to talk to. The way I see Nightstop now is they're basically like my family. They, they don't turn you away. Even if they're busy, they'll, they'll still speak to you and take the time to make sure you're okay. If I could say anything to myself, It'd be to stay strong because it will get better. I was 14 before I decided that I really wanted to move in with my dad and that he accepted that he wanted to do that and take on the responsibility as a father. I felt over the moon when I first moved in with him and was glad to know that my dad wanted a relationship with me. For the first six months to 12 months was all right. I started getting into a proper school that I liked, having more bonding sessions with my dad and generally getting to know each other properly. But after that, we found out we were too much alike, I suppose, and just clashed all the time. We didn't connect with each other because we didn't feel like a proper family. It was only us two at the time. So it was just clashing, arguing over pathetic things. He didn't know how to be a dad because he hasn't never done it before. So I started being rebellious. Stealing cars, riding motorbikes when I shouldn't be just stupid thefts from shops and that. It was the stupidest thing I could have done, really. The first time I knew I was going to jail, I felt like a ton of bricks just been put down on my shoulders. You've got thousands of people that you don't know, all crammed into one little place. So it can be quite scary. Well, it was just lying down in my cell and you hear the screws coming around, walking around the landing and handing post up. You get excited, but I knew I weren't going to get nothing. When I received my first Christmas card from Nightstop, it was very nice because at the time I weren't even getting letters or anything off my family. So Christmas time can be quite daunting in prison, so just give me more perspective on things. There is people out there caring, and an organisation out with homelessness, they can still think about you when you're in a place like that. It made me feel like I was wanted, people do care. I've been through non-stop since the age of 16, like, and I've been there non-stop, really. Whenever I've been back to Kidderminster, I've always been there to help. When you go to a host house, you'll either go with someone from Nightstop 
that they'll introduce you to them, sit down, have a cup of tea. They just try and make you feel as comfortable as possible. Since I've done everything through non-stop, my peer mentoring, I feel like a whole new person. I feel like I'm more respected and I've got more respect for other people. I want to be a support worker so I can help people, try and just help them perceive that life is a bit better than what they maybe think it is at the time. Things are looking better. I've been able to be a lot more confident and just I've got to meet loads more people and become more people friendly. It takes a big weight off your shoulders because places that perceived to help, I didn't believe in any of them apart from Nightstop because I knew I could be there, be myself and be spoken to like a human being.